Today, our champion, Hugh Ferguson of Hanover, Massachusetts, faces the challenge of Joe Days of North Truro, Massachusetts, on camel pin bowling. Hi, everybody. Welcome once again to Camel Pin Bowling. I'm Don Gillis, and just about everybody knows by now that this program is on videotape. We do the taping right here at the fairway in Natick, Massachusetts, on Route 9. And uh, it is always three strings of Candle Pin Bowling, total pinfall determining our winner. He will be rewarded with a handsome marble-based trophy from the Ace Trophy Company of Boston. The runner-up receives a smaller but otherwise identical version to indicate that he was a participant on our show. We have guaranteed prize money of $1,150. $700 goes to the winner. $300 goes to the runner-up. We have the $50 that goes to the winner of each string. And obviously, if they tied, they would split that at $25 apiece. We have a consolation prize to the runner-up of a set of Eagle Garden tools. And uh, coming up to the springtime soon, I suppose you have to start thinking about things like that. Also, the bowler with the most marks, the marksman of the day, will receive this, which is a $50 gift certificate from True Value Hardware Stores and Home Centers. There's other opportunity for our guys to make some money, and I'll tell you that as the show goes along, but why don't we meet today's bowlers? Come on up here. First of all, let's talk to Joe. I haven't seen you for a long time. Where have you been hiding? In a couple of years. <laughs> but you're still uh, running your little uh, cottage business down in North Truro? Yeah, my father's business, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, all right. But you're the guy who goes out there and does all the hammering in the off-season. Unfortunately. <laughs> Repairing everything, huh? Mm -hmm. Bowling well, are you? Let me see. Not bad you... lately. Let's see. 122. Hey, you're right up there, huh? Yeah. What'd you have for your roll-off? 653. Right. Not bad. You know, like old man River, he's been rolling oh, along here week know. after week. Huh? If he gets, let's the other guy get ahead for a while like that, then he comes roaring back again. <laughs> you're, you're, you're on a hot streak right now. Uh, just hanging in there. And it feels pretty good to walk yes, away with the number one, the 700, and the big trophy every week. Yes, huh? it does. Well, let's see if he can do it again. He's going to try to stop you. Okay. Good luck to both of you. All right. And we'll get underway right after this. Days of North Truro, Massachusetts, on the line. As I said, his league average is 122. Both these bowlers today are in that unusual category of people who have had an over 200 single string in candle pin bowling. Joe just missing a spare leave. Hugh Ferguson's high single is a 212, and Joe Day's is a 202. And we all know that uh, it is rare when a candle pin bowler can have a 200. As you are aware, the highest single that we have on our show is a 197 by Ed Zernike. And that's a show that's been on the air for over 28 years. It's an odd spare leave, as he's got the four and the 10, three pieces of wood. Can he move it over? Yes, nice shot. Boy, I'll tell you, that was a tough spare to make, but he made it. Now our defending champion, Hugh Ferguson. Hugh Ferguson from Hanover. This is his fifth week. In succession, he has defeated Joe Carcitti, Bob Allison, Brian Uphold, and Jim DeSimone. That was not a good delivery, and he knows it. Off to the left. We have $100 in our home viewer jackpot, and we have in our high-low jackpot, where we set up the 1710 at the end of the show for our bowlers to try to knock it down. That's up to $975. The one, three, nine, and 10 with wood behind the three pin, two pieces of wood. And he used it perfectly to make the spare. Joe Day's working on a spare. He 
got six on the spare, but not a good lead. Not good for converting. Two, four, six, and ten. Did a good job as he took out the two four, banged it off the sidewall, got some reaction, but not enough to go over and get the six and ten. He has to wait for the wood to stop rolling, and uh, as he began to roll, he noticed that it was taking one more little turn. It's a ten. Joe moves to lane three here at the fairway in Natick. The two, the four, and the ten. And another piece of rolling wood. Joe's high triple is 448. Got the two and four, but the ten is still there. Ferguson coming up. Hughes average 120 high and uh, the high triple 486. I already told you his high single was 212. Nine box. Hugh is married, has two sons, and is a truck driver for news distributors. He's representing both the Carlisle Bolodrome in Whitman and the Hanover Bolodrome, Hanson AA, and in Hanson, Massachusetts. Big strike. All right, we're going to take a check on the scoreboard, which we always do after four in the first string and in the second string. And there it is. Our challenger today, Joe Days from North Truro, Massachusetts on Cape Cod, 45. And Hugh Ferguson from Hanover, our defending champion, 43 with two bonus balls to roll. He's about to roll in the fifth box of the first string. Spare leave. He has a two and four again. And fortunately, this time does not have the ten in addition. Spare for Joe. He's representing the Orleans Bowling Center. Joe's had a good year. He was the runner-up in the Massachusetts Bowling Association 1986 state tournament to open all events champion Danny Murphy. So being second in all events in the Massachusetts Bowling Association state championship is not bad. Joe is also married and father of two sons. As is Hugh. Hugh coming up working on that strike that you see there in the fourth box. First bonus ball. Missed the head pin, but it, uh, how many did he get? One. Four, just four. Well, he's got another bonus ball to go. And looks good. Oh, all but the four. Good hit. So it's nine for a fill. Nine bucks. Hugh 
Hugh's been making a habit of taking home a lot of bonus money. In addition to the 700 for winning, there's a spread eagle. Two, four, seven on the left and three, six, ten on the right. He got the right wing and one of the two pins on the left. So he still has the two and the seven. Yeah, the first week he had 200 in bonus money. The next week he had 300. The third week he had 250. And last week he had 150. Now on top of his winning 700. As you know, or most of you do anyway, three marks in a row, any combination of strikes or spares in the same string that establishes a bonus of $50. Then each subsequent consecutive mark on that same string would be worth $50 a piece. And then if it happens to be three strikes in a row, there is an additional bonus of $1,000. For a spare? Yes. Seven is the fill, and he has a shot at another with a triangle down here and wood in front of it. The triangle is made up of the four, seven, and eight. With wood, yes, it went. Now Hugh Ferguson. drop on the first ball and a great chance at putting two marks together <clears throat> four pieces of wood and one standing pin the nine pin it went our challenger Joe days Joe with two marks in a row Full on that head pin. Just four. That's the second time he's had just a four for a fill. Good shot to take the four pins on the right. Now going for a ten box. Ten it is. Missed out on the bonus money. Three, six, ten on the right, seven alone over on the left, and one piece of wood just about where the five pin would be. Made it. Pretty spare. And uh, he waits for them to be reset. He's at 120. His league average is 122. Is it going to be a strike? Not quite. Nine. 129. Now, Hugh Ferguson has two marks in a row in the same two boxes, seven and eight. Let's see if he can put three together for some bonus money. Six and seven. Yes! A beauty! 
A beauty. One, three, six, and seven. All right. $50 in bonus money for Hugh Ferguson. And it's still alive. He's at 117. Plus this. Plus seven more, 124. Plus seven, 131. Thirty-three, and uh, that gives him the first string and the fifty dollars that goes for winning it. So he picked up the bonus money that was available, three marks in a row, and won the first string. And the score at the end of one is defending champion Hugh Ferguson one thirty-three and challenger Joe Days one twenty-nine. All right, defending champion now leading off the middle string, Hugh Ferguson. Then seven, eight, and ten across the back. A couple of pieces of wood between that three and the ten. That would have been pretty had it gone, and for a moment it appeared it would. A 396 last week. Previously, he had rolled a 394 the day he beat Bob Allison. So it didn't change his spot. He's still in fifth place for the 1986-87 True Value Championship show in late August with that 396. Jack Sanek is in fourth place with a 398. Beth Peterson with a 408 is in third place. Rich Hallis with a 422 in second. And Peter Flynn's 435 is still the top spot. That's for the live show, the True Value Championship, an hour and a half in late August with $20,000 in prize money. And as I said, the show is live. Five top bowlers since the last show would be going. That is five. Uh, what I mean by that is the five bowlers with the highest three string total on this show. Joe Days, today's challenger. Big hit. Just the six pin to pick up. And some wood that looks as if it will help. So Joe begins with a spare. Quite a contrast in styles as one is a very deliberate bowler, Hugh Ferguson. Joe Days is a very fast bowler. He doesn't waste any time. Big spare right on, I mean strike right on top of his spare. Now Hugh Ferguson. Janie Cartier keeping score on that big scoreboard. Keith Williams keeping score beside me. Hugh Ferguson rolling now, and he has the three, five, and then seven, nine, and 10. Another pretty, pretty spare. Nice, pretty spare. A beauty. Bonus. Nine pin drop. Thank you. 
Ralph Stewart is our lob line judge and referee. There he is in his accustomed spot, sitting right at the lob line. Don Riley is our statistician and coordinator. And Hugh Ferguson has two marks in a row. Joe Days has two marks in a row. Let's see now whether Joe can make it three in a row and pick up some bonus money. Five. He just missed the head pin. Another ball to roll, however, because it is a, str a strike that he's working on. A little too thin. So the fill is six. And uh, there is no bonus money. got the diamond to work on. You know how tough it is. Diamond left side. Two, four, five, and eight. He made it! And you all know how tough that is. All right, once again, we're going to take a check on the scoreboard after four boxes of the second string. Our challenger, Joe Days, from North Truro, is at 55 with a bonus ball to roll. And from Hanover, Hugh Ferguson, our defending champion, 47 with a bonus ball to row. He's trying to make it three marks in a row. And he did with a strike. He's up to 150 in bonus money. First bonus ball gets him five. And he's working on the one, two, four, eight, and nine. Everything but the head pins. So the bonus stops there. It's a good fill with the nine. A 10 box. Now challenger Joe Days comes up. He did not put three together, but he has three marks in the last four, and he's working on one of those marks right now. Is it going to? Yes, it's a strike. Backdoor strike knocks down the two pin. Strikes in a row, and I've already told you what three strikes in a row would mean. So there'll be a little excitement when Joe comes up. Now Hugh Ferguson. Hugh missed the head pin that time. Is left with a one, three, seven, eight, and ten. Made it! A pretty one. A pretty one. Yes. Yes, indeed. Boy, he's made some pretty ones. Well, they both have, but it just seems as if some of the some of them were a little more spectacular since they looked more difficult. The ones that Hugh made. going to be eight is going to be nine now a nine pin drop so he just has the seven pin boy a lot of action that time with those pins rolling around 
Wouldn't you like to have that happen to you if you were bowling, huh? Get that kind of good action. Another mark. Boy, they, they are both have good middle strings going. And you know what's happening now. Joe Days is coming up with that. Two strikes in a row on the board. Let's watch. Is he going to get it? No. Three strikes in a row, an additional bonus of $1,000. He got a beautiful right pocket hit. I thought it might go. Too bad. He was not able to continue his streak. He did get $50 for three marks in a row. One twenty one with three boxes to go. That was a thin hit. Boy, he turned around just as soon as he released that one and said, Oh, no, that's not where it was supposed to go. And the ball has stayed on the plate. Now going down there is referee and lob line judge Ralph Stewart. And he'll have to get that ball into the pit. Joe Day's got a nine box. 130 with two to go. Hugh Ferguson right now is at 115. But he has a bonus ball here and two boxes to go. So let's see how close he'll be to that 130. Here's the bonus. Another big hit. Another big nine. Boy, they do. He does mix them up. They do fall. Looks like uh, another three marks in a row. He does have three marks in a row. And $50 more in bonus money. As I said, Q has really been piling up the bonus money. Big hit and a nine pin drop. One forty three plus nine is one fifty two. And one pin to pick up to make it one fifty three and give him a bonus ball. Made it. Another fifty dollars in bonus money. 250 at 153 right now and a bonus ball to roll and he had a 133 don't forget four more a 157 now Joe Days comes up. He's at 130 with two to go. One mark. And he could tie Q. Got a little break there. Now he's got that side saddle triangle made up of the three, five, and nine with a piece of wood in there. Nope. Got the three, but that's all. All right, that brings him to 140. He's got uh, mostly a picket fence across the back, seven, nine, and 10. Three pieces of wood, sort of perpendicular to the nine and the 10. Thank you. 
He'll use them. And he made it. Spear and a pretty one with the seven, nine, and ten across the back using the wood. Moment here for a loose ball. Now he's at 150. And he gets how many? Gets eight. 158, and that wins him the middle string by one pin. Boy, do we have a couple of shots at 400, or do we have a couple of shots at 400 here? Oh, baby. All right, $50 in bonus money goes to Joe Days for winning the middle string, 158 to 157. And the totals, they're only three pins apart. Look how close they will be when they're coming out for a 400. Ferguson, 290, Days, 287. Days has begun the third with a nine and an eight for 17, and Hugh Ferguson a 10 and an eight for 18. Now here's Joe Days to roll in the third box of the third string. I mentioned all of our crew are, except the man who puts it together and keeps it together, that's our producer director, Phil Rubin. I didn't forget you, Phil, honest. Four horsemen right side. So it'll be three boxes now without a mark for Joe Days in the third string. In the second string, he had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, and six. There's a tuppy, and he turns around, showing a bit of dismay as he has the four horsemen left side plus the nine pin, which is a tough shot. So it's four boxes now without a mark. Nine. This, uh, this happens often when <coughs> the bowlers have such high totals after two and it looks so easy to make a 400. And I think they start pressing for it or whatever, but they, they don't seem to be as loose Let's see what Hugh can do. Maybe he can change that. He almost did with a strike. Now he's got a single pin to pick up for a spare. It'll be the first mark by anybody in the third string. Being very careful, and he missed it. Up by five. That's a big hit. Is it going to be a strike? Nope. Everything except the kingpin. The five pin is there all alone. No wood. Just made it, just made it, and you, if you could see his reaction, it was, it was uh, sort of, oh, am I glad I made that? I almost missed it. Okay, here's Joe Days now, today's challenger. Spare lead, not a guaranteed spare, with the two, four, five. That's what I mean when I say it's not a guaranteed. It's one of the, it looks, it's one of those that looks so easy. But a bowler often will take the lead pin, which can, is either the two or the three, depending on which side it is, and will get two pins, but not the other one. Four horsemen right side and the seven pin.
waiting for wood. Made it! All right, pretty spear. When he finally made one, it was a pretty one. But he had to wait six boxes before he got his first mark. Hugh got his in the fourth. And he's about to roll now, and he leads by five in completed frames. Bonus ball. Six. One, three, seven, and eight, no wood. That's what he's facing. Got just the three. An eight box. He's up. He's up by ten. He has five boxes to go. Diamond on the right plus the ten. Still two of them there. A ten. Sixty two. Joe Day's working on a spare. He gets a big eight and an opportunity to convert another spare. For a spare? No, he didn't get it. He, he can't believe it. He just hit himself on the head as much as to say, you dummy. What did you play it that way for? It did look as if with all that wood, it would just sweep in there, and then he would get it. One mark for each bowler so far. Now see how much of this wood is gonna stay and how much is gonna roll off. One has rolled off and another piece rolling around. Seems like no matter where it stops, it's not gonna be helpful. Can he get by it? Nope. It was a roadblock. As we have said so many times in candle pin bowling, some of the intriguing things about it, the wood sometimes helps and sometimes it hurts. An eight box. 81. All right, let's see what Hugh Ferguson can do now. Hugh leading right now by just two pins. Four horsemen left side. That is a big, big clutch spare. Wow, is that a clutch spare. His lead had been cut to two pins. Now he's opposite a 10, and he will add to that lead by whatever he gets on this next one. So he's leading by six now. And but he's opposite an eight box. Oh. 
got the left side and kicked over that two pin, but it jumped right between the three and the six and didn't knock down anything. Except it's in a pretty good spot right now to help him to make a 10 here. And that would give him two more pins. He got it. Okay, he's up by eight right now. Or if you want to put it this way, Joe Days, our challenger, is trailing by eight as he comes up for the final two boxes. Three pins over on the right. It's the six, nine, and ten. He turned around, knew he had missed it. Had a chance there, but got a 10. Strike now in the 10th. Seven. Nine. One ten. Three ninety seven is what he has. Hugh needs a one oh seven to tie. One oh seven to tie. Eight pin drop. Piece of wood in a pretty good spot if you're going to have a piece of wood when you have the nine and ten. Side by side pins. All right. A nine, <coughs> ninety five. So Hugh, Hugh Ferguson has to mark. He needs a 107 to tie, a 108 to win it. So he must mark. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. He has the four, five, six, and in the back, the seven and ten. This is the ball. He did not make it, and Joe Days has won. It is a nine for a 104. So after being on for five weeks, Hugh Ferguson is finally defeated. Joe Days, and what would you have guessed you would have given anything to say that one of these guys at least would have rolled a 400 coming in with 287 and 290. But as so often happens, they seem to tighten up when it's that close. Final score, Joe Days, our new champion, 397 and Hugh Ferguson, 394. He won both bowlers combined, $100 in here. So if anybody is, uh, the card I draw is between 781 and 801, they'll win the $100. But even if they're nowhere near it, they'll be rewarded. Here's what Phil Rubin has for you today. Two cassette tapes from RCA Records. First, the latest album from America's favorite singer, Kenny Rogers. They don't make them like they used to. And from Samantha Fox, her latest album, 
touch me. And an Alyssa Ashley musk spray and dusting powder set. The most sensuous fragrance a woman could wear. It blends with your body chemistry so it's extra enticing. And Stetson Cologne, easy to wear, hard to resist. To a man, the most comfortable fragrance. To a woman, the most compelling. Let's see if we're gonna give away $100 today, shall we? Mosey around in here somewhere and find a card. This is uh, Henry Hibbard from Chelsea, and his guess is 728, so it'll be up to 150 next week. All right, Joe, you get first crack at our high low jackpot. It's only worth $975. <laughs> Still there. Oh, next week it'll be worth a thousand dollars. Okay, come on up here, guys, please. You know, all right. You just get in line over there because the disorganized one here is a. Huey, it was a pretty good five-week ride, and I thought, sure, I would have given anything. I could have bet anything. You guys were both going to go over 400. Yeah, I ran, we both ran out of gas. Uh, $250 in bonus money. Again, you keep rolling that up, and $300, and the smaller trophy. Uh, and he knocked you out, you know, out of the championship thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> good. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you, man. Okay. Joe, you did it. Made it look easy, too, huh? <laughs> little pressure along the way. Okay. $700 plus $150 in bonus money. And, uh, Huey, I forgot to tell you, you get the $50 gift certificate by one. He had one more mark than you. Oh, you know that, huh? You get the trophy from the Ace Trophy Company, and uh, you are now in fifth place for our championship show. How about that? You'd like to pile it up a little Should've higher, a little though, wouldn't higher you? Okay. Yeah. Maybe, hey, listen, you get another chance next week. I don't know who your challenger is yet, but we'll be here, you'll be here, and you'll be here, too. Don Gillis for the whole crew. Bye-bye, everybody.